back again. And um, I want to give you all an update, especially Alberto. Hi, Alberto. Um, I replaced... Let me get some light here. I replaced this chip right here, U23. And believe me, it was not that easy. Um, had to use some chip quick to get it off. But I didn't tear up the PCB. And uh, put it in and still doing the same thing. But I think I'm a little bit closer to what's going on. And that's the purpose of, uh, of this test. Or of this video, I should say. Anyway, for a little background, and I hope that you all can see this. This is U23. Um, this is U27, I believe. This is all out of the service manual. Now, very quickly, this is the input here to a buffer, which is from the uh, VCO. Then it goes to, I mean, I'm just going to say this generally. It goes to U23 which is your first divider. Then it goes through this, because this is all ECL logic. It goes through this ECL converter to TTL converter, changing the logic levels. Then it goes to this TTL divider. Now, this is the curious thing. What I'm gonna do is go through this in turn. We're first going to check um, wish I had a pointer here. We're first going to check the output of this second divider. And something curious happens. So hold on and let me connect everything up and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I'm back with everything hooked up. This is on U14 pin one, which is the which is connected to the output of, I think it's U27, that second TTL divider. Now, mind you, the way that this thing works is that as it's 100 hertz increments, as it's increased, the first, the ECL divider, U23, has four data bits, D0 through D3. I think that's what it is. Uh, let's see, let me make sure. Yes, D0 through D3, and that's serially shifted into these shift registers here, and then goes to U23. Each 100 hertz, this is incremented by one. And it basically uses binary coded decimal. You know, it basically just incre increases it base two. When this reaches a count of 16, or well, zero through 15, 16, it goes back to zero. And this guy here is incremented by one. So it's a way of creating a multiple divider. Okay? So, just spare in mind that this U20 does not change. U27 does not change. The only thing that changes when you're incrementing it by 100 hertz within a certain range, of course, is this guy right here. And we're not going to be moving beyond. This, this is 16 steps or 1600 hertz on the output of the signal generator we're not going to be going beyond there. So nothing else should be changing in this area, and it really doesn't. But we're checking the output. This, we're checking here on U27. This is where we have the oscilloscope connected. And what I'm going to be doing is, is slowly incrementing this frequency by 100 hertz at a time, which should increment U23 one uh one base one a uh, base two excuse me uh change at a time you know and it, basically it should it should one of the bits should change at a time 
Now, this is the waveform we're getting right now. Now, I'm going to count it out as I increment it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, look what happens at six. Look, seven, and it goes to nothing. No, more. It's not counting anymore. It's not counting. It's not doing anything. All right. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the probe from the output to the input, which is the input comes from this level converter. And let's see what it's doing. Okay, I'll be right back. And this is the signal. We have it back at 70 megahertz. This is the signal that's driving. Uh, I think it's U27, that, that second BCD divider or counter, which is acting as a divider. The two lines you see is basically just cursor lines that I placed on the Tektronix scope. The lower line is 800 millivolts, which is the, the uh, threshold for a binary zero or a digital zero in TTL. And the upper is two volts which is the threshold for a high, you know, for a, a binary one in TTL. So a high and a low. Watch what happens. I'm going to increment it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now let me stabilize the waveform here because it's just, it's not triggering. But look, it's not reaching the lower bounds. And the frequency is at 5.92 megahertz. Now I'll go back down. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, zero. Back to 70. Now it's actually triggering on the upside and triggering on the downside. All right, next question. The input to this level converter, which is right here, it's U30. Is it driving things properly? Maybe it's the problem. All right, I'm going to reattach the probes and I'll be back. Now, this is the waveform that's going in to this level converter. It's basically, I'm taking it right on that diode, okay? On the um, anode side of the diode. I've only used the cursors to basically form a channel around these waves. Now I'm going to increment this and watch what happens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Notice the wave gets peakier. Obviously, the frequency is increasing. Okay, it's up to 10 megahertz. Um, but the levels stay exactly the same, which is where they should be. The point is, is all I can conclude from this, and I don't know if there's anything else wrong with it, but this really could be a lot of the problem I'm seeing, um, is that it has to be in this level translation circuit, which basically consists of two resistors, two caps, a diode, and a transistor. I've tested the resistors, because I can do that in circuit easily. They're fine. The diode appears to be all right, um, but, you know, maybe not. Who knows? Maybe there's excessive capacitance on it. I don't know. Uh, the caps I really can't test in circuit, and the transistor I can't test in circuit. So anyway, that's my conclusion. I'd love to hear from anyone who can give me an idea of what they think. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.